The New Mexico Flower Petal Chop Technique for FACO of Dense Cataracts by Gregory Ogawa, No Financial Interests. This particular technique was developed in 2009 by Dr. Arthur J. Weinstein at Eye Associates of New Mexico. The technique works well for dense to extremely dense cataracts. After making 23-gauge paracentesis openings, I inject a lidophenylephrine mix for comfort and dilation, followed by a dispersive OVD starting from the far side to optimize the view and the fill. I use a Stamler or Ogawa Stamler hook for globe stabilization while creating a conj scleral corneal main incision with a very sharp 2.2 mm steel keratome. The conj is in size to minimize ballooning. The rexus is begun with a bent needle cystotome, then Jones Inamura forceps with millimeter marks are used to measure for appropriate sizing while continuing and completing the capsular rexus. Effective hydrodissection is needed to allow the lens to be freely rotated. The FACO tip goes in with the bevel turned sideways to minimize the chance of creating a decimase flap. Sculpt mode, with good cutting power, is used to create a small central bowl with goals of achieving relatively vertical sidewalls and the thin bottom. In lenses with greater peripheral density, it works better to increase the diameter of the bowl. A Sinsky hook is placed in through a paracentesis opening. This section of video is shown unedited so one can view the entire process of creating the petals. A chop setting with high vacuum, low flow, and only longitudinal ultrasound is used while burying the tip into the pericentral nucleus at mid-height on the bowl's wall. A Sinsky hook is placed on top of the lens just peripheral to the FACO tip before it is pushed down in a vertical chop motion and then moved off to the left propagating the crack that was started by the chop. The denser the lens, the more important it is to place the Sinsky hook in line with the FACO tip to avoid rotating the lens around the FACO tip. This particular lens is divided into five pieces, but removal of denser lenses benefits from creating more petals, often as many as eight. For extremely dense lenses, a longer, sharper, blade-like chopper can be useful for creating the petals. Because of friction between petals, the machine may need to be kept in chop mode to pull the first petal centrally. After that, quadrant removal settings are generally adequate. In this case, I continue to use the Sinsky hook as the second instrument, but other times I may switch to a ha Eflega cleaver to assist with manipulating and chopping the elevated lens pieces. If the petals will not bend centrally, then additional sculpting at the base of the bowl may be needed to make the hinge point of the petal thinner and more flexible, although that was not needed in this case. A little rotary motion of the FACO tip and some pressure on the limbus can help liberate nuclear pieces remaining in the angle. I use an upward port Simco on a syringe to loosen subincisional cortex, and in this case a Simco INA removes the minimal remaining cortex. Cohesive OVD is injected into the bag and anterior chamber prior to wound assist injection of a one-piece acrylic IOL. The IOL is positioned in the bag with the haptic optic junctions at 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock. The INA removes the OVD from the AC and from behind the IOL. The eye is filled to an appropriate pressure with the infusion placed across the incision. Then a sponge is utilized to test incision seal and IOP prior to removing the Lieberman lid speculum. 